Okay, next up is uh, book chasing. Um, what that man has taught me is that hmm, typically they say an image is worth more than a thousand words. Um, and in my first encounter with book, he took an image of me in ASCII. So, in a way, he taught me that there is nothing more fun than telling an image in a thousand words. Um, and Vuk is also very much a person uh, that is... There is no non-ambiguous uh, way to describe, describe him. He, he's like uh, a Schrodinger cat of uh, net art. But he has seen the description of himself. I, I mean, how do you describe an artist that is retired? Is he still an artist? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like Jimi Hendrix who forgot to overdose. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Okay, so this is what he's saying. Vuk Chosic, cosmopolitan retired artist with Balkan roots, is one of the pioneers of net art and a hacker of ideas, totally incapable of showing reverence towards the formalities of the art world. For a particular group of artists working in the mid-90s, the possibilities opened up by internet access were just as exciting as the emergence of performance or video art has been to artists working in the 60s. Virtually overnight, they had access to a new medium that could give shape to the weirdest ideas, and the evolution of net art kept pace... Oops, I lost your biography. At least somebody else is never mind. Okay. <laughs> Vibrogenesis uh, was a project in Moscow. <laughs> you already did it, huh? Okay. So, um, and the evolution of net art kept pace with that of the internet itself. Wook was one of the mo uh, one of the motors behind this, this scene and the author of such, such such subtle conceptual surgical operations as the theft of the Documenta X website, which is here on display. Uh, a History of Art for Airports, that's the artwork that I meet every day I come to work, and the ASCII Art Ensemble, which aimed to transform the world into the letters and numbers of the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, beginning with the Deep Throat and other historical traditions. So that's the one I meet every day I come to uh, my kitchen, it's still in the fridge. Oh, the photo uh, you made of me. We should make a scan of that because uh, it's a uh, thermal it's fading away. It's trying to go away. That's fine. All right, let's do it. Let's do this. Hi guys. Uh, my name my name is Vuk and I'm an alcoholic. Um, I'm one of these you know old school new media guys. Uh, Sebastian said last, uh, yesterday like uh, dinosaurs of net art is true. And yes, I, I do feel like one of these rock stars that failed to to overdose. In time, I just happen to be around still, and uh, now you have to bear with me. I have a full hour slot, so you're a bit doomed. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, uh, I, I was invited to present this piece that I've done in, you know, 1930s, uh, in 1990s, okay, um, which is somehow pertinent to this event, but, and then also because I know that there's some personal background here, and Aliris and Hans know very well, my friend from Ljubljana, and I said, oh, I have to show you the slides of a show we did together just now, uh, but we never find the time, and so I put those in this, so you're getting two presentations for the price of one, I think you should be happy, okay? All right, uh, cables are like so that I will have to jump to my... Uh, but before I start, uh, this is uh, a scene from uh, the festival called Hype, which is a, a previous in incarnation of, uh, of this event, uh, in a different shape, of course, and uh, this uh, bearded fellow you recognize, uh, but the trick is that uh, I, just, I just wanted to illustrate. Uh, uh, we had our symposium in the premises of the City Art Gallery in Ljubljana, again, of Alinkas, and this is where that uh, library, that, I'm sorry, the bookstore, was and this uh, weirdo guy who used to run the bookstore found his uh, domicile in, in, in this museum and it all worked fine uh, and the, the, there's two, two bits of news or three maybe um, one is I'm, I'm in touch with a guy he says hello to everybody in the conference who's been to Ljubljana and he remembered Sean especially I don't know why 
Um, the, the second thing is that he has closed the bookshop. It doesn't exist anymore. Now he's just employed in another small bookshop in a small city in Slovenia. So it's kind of sad, but it's not the end of the story, I'm sure. There's more to come from that person. And the third thing is a slide I've put somewhere near the end, so there will be time. All right, let's move on. So this is this documenta thing, all right? Uh, uh, for me, the, the, the request to deliver a little talk about this piece and only about this piece was like a, a massacre. Uh, I'm really not a well-organized person. I don't use the concept of a CV and I don't archive much of my shit. Uh, and, so, and I said to myself, okay, you're going to a archive-related event. Now, like, do your homework, white boy. And I tried. Before that, let's see how internet looks today. This is uh, from a YouTuber event. <laughs> this is how it really looks. This is, how, um, this is what internet popularity means nowadays. The guy that walks behind the chicks, the like, nano chicks, you know, the 12 year olds, he's like this famous YouTube character, and they're all making selfies with him, and it's all very sincere. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to cry now, really, because it would not be sincere, but my emotions when I saw this first were very near crying, because I couldn't uh, believe the discrepancy between the happy-looking faces and actual deep sadness of this whole situation for everybody involved. Um, I don't know, for me this is fucking serious. It's not just serious, it's fucking serious. Let's go to the story, the one story. It's a story of two things colliding. One of them is net art. Uh, this is not a lecture about net art, but I need to give a little bit of an intro. Um, sometime in 93 and 4, with all this uh, fantastic uh, new world of browsers uh, offering insight and access to stuff, uh, most logically, some, some crazy individuals uh, started asking funky questions and trying to figure out whether there's, going, whether there's a way of, uh, you know, thinking up of a new way of expressing yourself and working in your fashion and shit like that. And this is more or less how net art used to look at the time. Nowadays it's useless when you look at it with these fancy new screens with uh, large resolutions. Our net art is small nowadays, that's one characteristic for sure. Uh, uh, here you can see some stuff by Cornelia, uh, over there, huh? Connie, did you see this, like in the last 15 years? And there's, uh, I think, Irrational there, but uh, not, not with your name in that particular frame, because you know how it goes. I, I searched through uh, Google this uh, Otle business website, uh, um, and uh, I searched for NetArt in a browser, because I think that's quite sweet. Anyway, uh, we were like this you know, bunch of guys and chicks. I, I believe that uh, we had representatives from, from all the dominant gender groups uh, of our time, which is guys and chicks only, uh, all school, I told you. Uh, and um, to a large extent, our work was about at first trying to figure out the technology, then trying to see whom we can surprise, how we can crash people's browsers have a lot of fun doing it, but also we were looking at the art world because we were mostly refugees from that world. We were looking for a place where we could be on our own, not having a single pixel of a relation with that, those ugly people there, you know, the art bureaucracy, the galleries, the curators, the museum owners, the chiefs and investors, fuck that. We were like the rulers of our own world, and so on and so on. A lot of crap, but it helped. <laughs> So, I'm trying to avoid any serious definitions of that art. Uh, this is like one protagonist of the two. Okay, now the second protagonist in the story. In a small village of Kassel in Germany, every five years there's a fair, uh, like a village fair. It's about art, it's called Documenta. In 1997, uh, they have decided, which I think was a, a, a obviously clever thing, uh, to include net art in the overview, a panoramic shot of what's on and what's hot in the overall you know, global art scene. In itself, that idea is cool. 
what these guys did is that they have also commissioned several net artists, I think Heath, Bunting, and Jody, uh, to, to do projects for the actual exhibition, but also in the upper right hand side, you can see that there is Orangerie, this wonderful huge space was given to uh, this whole community of communities, uh, where several groupings uh, centered around a few mailing lists were offered 10 times, 10 days, their space to do their shit. So we had a foothold on the beach, so to say, in the art world. And so far, so good. One problematic thing was that for some reason the curators have decided that they will show online works also in the gallery space, <coughs> and that they really you know, hit the wall there. Uh, what they did is the, the two photos at the bottom end of the slide, which is, you know, they painted the room blue, which was the color of their sponsor, IBM. So it's, it's not just Google, you know, if you're nowadays, or today, where, where is, where is Femke? I saw him before. Femke, where are you? There you are. I don't know why. I felt you know, you know, you, you're camouflaged in this conference environment, like black on black. <laughs> so it, uh, nowadays, this would be like a rainbow room, right? Uh, like, uh, like this Hotel Geocities Museum. Um, and uh, the works in the, show, in the show were all offline and we all ridiculed the so-called dev office exhibition space and so on. But that was, let's say, a minor, minor mistake. Uh, yeah, some people were nervous about it, some less. Uh, the exposure was more important than the difficulty of accessing work and shit like that. But till this point, we could, we could live together. But, you know, this is a story about a collision. Let's see what, what, what collided we saw, but let's see how. Around one month before the end of the actual exhibition, uh, the local uh, uh, PR department of the Documenta project uh, issued a little press release saying, announcing that uh, in about a month uh, the exhibition ends, and also with that end of the show, we're going to take off the website, pull, uh, you know, pull the plug, and sell it later as a CD ROM in you know, a museum shop. Uh, I understand that I really do, did know this already back then that this was, this was a very clear bureaucratic decision to save money on hosting and to not uh, worry about stuff. I spoke to uh, Senor Julie a uh, year or two ago and he, he reconfirmed that uh, uh, the decision was made by, by really pencil pushers in the office and not by the curatorial team. And it's, it's cool, it's all legit. But you know, uh, uh, for me, art world was uh, a one and only monolithic entity, and I didn't care for nuance much. <laughs> so what I decided to do was a super simple thing. It's a four-letter word in a Unix world. It's VGET. I don't know how you say that in German. Um, it's a simple command to copy a full uh, content of any website, right? So what I you know, managed to do was to make a full copy of Documenta, uh, and on the night that the PR department gave out the next press release saying, you know, hello world, the show is over, and so is the website, come to our museum, buy it on the city. With the help of Heath Bunting, who is one crazy, crazy guy, uh, <laughs> a, a person that is very near the definition of best friend in my life, please. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, you also heard just now how he qualified. Um, uh, I managed to put my hands on a, on a mailing list that uh, Documenta uses. <laughs> and so I just sent another press release out. <laughs> saying that, what was it? Uh, uh, you might recognize like, Lady DX uh, dies in an attitude crash or something like that and informing the world that uh, the website is actually not down, it's up, but it's in another place, it's been salvaged by an artist, period. And that was that, uh, simple as this. Uh, now, it was a gesture I'm trying to figure out myself even today when, I, when somebody pushes me to think about it, uh, that uh, was uh, an idea that was floating in the air. We were already playing with copy and paste a lot. Uh, Jaron Lanier insists uh, nowadays in these, in these obnoxious books that he writes it, uh, the command copy and paste in, in early uh, computers is there because uh, the primary fundamental research was done at Xerox Park and they were the copying company. I, I don't know about that. I, 
but it strikes me as funky and I would like to make a combination of the logos, like a D and then like Xerox, but never mind. Um, it makes a little meaning, no, it doesn't sense to me. Um, anyway, uh, this soon became a, a little bit of a, a serious story in net art circles in the round because it was uh, uh, now a uh, materialization of a very, very uh, expected crash. Uh, very many people wanted something bad to happen between net art and document and really finally it did. Uh, so we got a lot of applause, it's, uh, not only me, but everybody involved in that, uh, that was very fine. Um, so there were outcomes of, of that. Alright, that's the website, just like that. You can see the same <coughs> image over there, but it doesn't, <laughs> the computer doesn't work, so that you're not missing anything. Uh, this is the one definition, or one description of that, of that work that I, I liked the most at the time. I, kept using and can't see shit. I don't know why I chose these gray letters, the gray uh, color for the, for the font. Uh, these are two French people. Both of them are dead. Don't worry, they're harmless and dead. <laughs> um, uh, the way I personally addressed this work when I was doing it, I think it's my duty as a perpetrator to uh, give a confession straight, was, was a mix of these two people. Uh, we were all educated on, uh, on, on their legacies, uh, so this Duchamp's concept of ready-made was like the sexiest thing around, even in the 90s, you know, even after 80 years, it had relevance. But, of course, you cannot be a, a serious, you know, properly self-absorbed, arrogant son of a bitch net artist and simply do a ready-made, you know, need to find a way to twist it and to deton the thing, this is where the ball comes in. And uh, I was personally looking at that piece as a, simply a way uh, for, um, for anybody, for any user of the internet, to um, take art from the art world, as represented by the Comenta, and putting it back to where it belongs, which is online. And I, I still believe in the power of that, uh, of that little combination of buzzwords there in French. Uh, the, and, and the other definitions and descriptions of that work of mine uh, I find less appealing or strong, but still. Funny things happened with that piece later on. Oh, you can't even see half of the screen. Well, fuck it. Uh, uh, I was involved a few times in exhibitions around the place and I decided whenever I could to show this piece as well. Uh, whenever I was, uh, you know, in the decision making chain or, or ecosystem of decisioners or, or, or tag cloud or alcoholic folk or secret handshake of masons. Anyway, I, I managed to put my piece in a few shows. Uh, at first, the better one was in Venice by any I found that to be a, yet another little revenge of a small person against the uh, art system uh, without noticing that I'm 100% part of that system. Uh, <laughs> I remember Connie was there, she gave me flowers at the opening, that was so sweet. But that was a part of another uh, trajectory. Because just before that, uh, we were together at uh, this ammunition factory in Germany, uh, did temporarily serving as an art center called ZKM, right? And uh, uh, it's in the hiatus right now that we have to understand, of course, but we're using this little short time. Uh, anyway, um, no, I'm not going to expand, but those flowers are remembered and treasured. Uh, so, so, so for me, that was uh, of, of certain symbolic importance. It was, uh, of course, a representation of Slovenia, Pavilion, you know, official selection, blah, 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 big deal. Oslo was a good show. Um, it was Natural History of Net Art, and there they have exhibited not only my documenta piece, but also my t-shirt, and, and Olya's sweater, and Alexei Shulgin's slippers, and stuff like that. It's really fantastic. I think, really, that that was the best exhibition about Net Art that I have seen, also physically witnessed. It was by Joseph in Boston. Joseph in Boston was massively involved. The key curator was Pierre Platou, this like Viking, alcoholic, fantastic person. <laughs> really, really, I like. I'm still in love with him, uh, and it's been a while. 
Milana, I think Shaw, uh, no, Mr. Uh, no, uh, you, you, you keep mentioning boys, you German guys. Uh, over there, uh, I, actually, it was me curating the show, uh, it was about copying shit. So, um, and I did the show because of two guys from Zagreb, you know, Karabogda and the other guy. <coughs> uh, a funny thing happened, I don't, know, I don't know if you guys are aware. Uh, there was a big Fluxus show, or was it Fluxus? I think it was. I think it was Boys. Or just a Boys show. Okay. But I mean, uh, anyway, the, the trick is that uh, there was, there was a, you know, a, black, a black box bit of a show with a few TVs and some DVD players, and there you can sit down and you know, put your headsets, like with Connie's uh, piece over there, put your headphones and like listen to some voice video related, you know, voice related video stuff. And these guys, what they did is that, uh, uh, two students of history of art, from that are very young people. They stole a DVD, went out, made copies, brought the DVD back without anybody ever noticing. So, you know, it's hard to call it a big, you know, theft or, you know, like the, the Italian job. You know, right? and, and then they gave out ads uh, offering to people to uh, make copies for them. I, th I found that to be very, very nice. So I, I did a show in, in this city, Novodim, which is halfway between Ljubljana and Zagreb. Uh, with, with, with my documenta and this voice business of theirs, and, and two more pieces by Yes Man and by Zero One, Zero Uno, uh, uh, all about copying. And I like the installation of the photo, doesn't give it uh, justice. Uh, I've just put a table with these four pieces in four uh, PCs. Ha! A word game, a spontaneous word game. <laughs> so, four, four works of art and, and four computers. Uh, uh, and then, uh, because the gun is in the L shape, I, I just uh, copied and pasted that same setup once more. <laughs> so there was two shows for the price of one. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Havana Daniel knows. Uh, and, and then, you see, the bottom left, that was in Kassel. Aram Bartol, uh, my great German friend. You know Aram Bartol? Good artist. Young individual. Healthy. Anyway, uh, he, he, he came up uh, with this uh, uh, concept of displaying internet art uh, but just by putting routers space, you take your prosthesis, you have a mobile device, you look at the available uh, route, uh, networks and you see names of net artists. Okay? You click on you know, my name for instance, or Jody, whoever, and you can see their art in this browser, uh, portable browser, but the, the fun part is that you cannot see any other part of the internet, because the browser locks you in that one piece of art. I like that very much. But the funky part is also that the show was in Castle, so my piece finally came back home. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I tried to push it. Uh, I was in uh, many other exhibitions. These are shows of this piece, uh, and, and sometimes also in territorial exhibitions. Even if, even though I'm a digital guy, they put me in these shows about Balkans, and I found a catalog over there, a uh, big one, something <laughs> in German. Please tell me how it's properly Schlucht, right? I just found it. It was curated by René Bloch. It's this uh, smuggler of boys yet again. <laughs> and uh, you know, you can buy furs, you can buy some boys. Uh, yeah. and, and I was trying to make it with the show in uh, Castle, uh, Kunst something, the house where it says Kunst. And uh, I was really fighting with it uh, briefly though, to smile that documenta piece into that building, but it, it, he wouldn't play. He wouldn't play, I'm sorry to say. The red thing is. is Actually, later I added more slides from the show. It's from the Lugana show that just closed a month ago. And the last piece is from over there when the computer was turned on, so I can actually make a photo. So <laughs> let's just move on. Oh, uh, I thought I deleted this slide a minute ago. I was fixing my projection while we were doing the QA. This shit ended in books. Many people built themselves careers and PhDs. It's called, uh, you know, peer to peer network, you know, P2P. This here, what you see, is PhD to PhD. <laughs> <laughs> but some of these books are fine. You see Josephine Bosma, I think, I, I found that book to be very sweet. And I reread it recently when I was working on the text of mine. It was really cool. But some of them are amazingly stupid. I'm not going to, I, uh, 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 for a single moment in this file, in this image, I was also putting, you know, those Facebook uh, Corinda thumbs, you know? Uh, I was doing votes, but then I, I deleted it because it would hurt too many, too many people and feelings and shit. Mm -hmm. And then again, I, I, I went 
mind you, this is me doing my homework, uh, looking for places where my documenta piece was exhibited or written about. All of those books treat my work, right? This piece. And this, is, uh, this was the toughest bit. I'm sorry for the pompous pr uh, promotion here. Uh, I mean, I'm already here. Why would, you, why would you watch my face over there too? But this was a lot of work for me to uh, find the lectures where I spoke about this piece in these last, what, 20 years. And I especially put an emphasis on photos with my daughter sleeping while I talk. <laughs> I don't know why, for me, that was very meaningful. And uh, uh, there where it says Walker, it's, it's me and Oli. Walker is this uh, art-related institution in uh, America, in Minneapolis, which is a city that is built next to Mall of America, which is the biggest shopping mall in the United States. <laughs> Toilet is in London, but... Uh, <laughs> Rijeka was good, but you were not there because of politics, yeah. <laughs> yeah I here, but Barcelona, the other guy, the, the guy, the mouse driver there is DJ Spooky. You know that guy? He's famous, I guess. Not in my world. But that's the best event. Do you know, are you from Barcelona? This is CCCB. Yeah. This is Influencers. Fantastic festival. Okay, okay, let's move on. They're going to pass. Sorry? No, there is one now, uh, this year, the number 10, the, yeah. but the wife of the guy, uh, she has a restaurant, so, so you know, there's always a backup plan. <laughs> uh, so, I realized that this piece of mine is here uh, for a reason, uh, I'm this uh, individual anarchist kind of an artist, uh, and uh, I did this archivistic gesture against uh, a precisely delineated opponent, so it was a confrontational piece, fine. But uh, uh, of course, uh, since this is an archiving re uh, related uh, event, uh, I, I did another layer of, uh, let's say, librarian work on top of the homework I've just displayed briefly, and that is to, to just signal the tags, uh, that there are other tags that are surrounding the same piece. So I'm going to show you the other conferences in which this piece could, could be. Uh, Presented. One is the conference about uh, the fact that the art market and the art system are, are, are mainly centered around the 1%. I, just, I was just in a show, uh, <laughs> there was a fantastic exhibition I never went to see it, of course, in Barbican in uh, London. It, it was, uh, how would you call it? Uh, I didn't read, even read the text uh, so much about it. Digital, digital Revolution, yes, a celebration of 20 years of digital something, but actually it was hijacked by. Portlet, again, Google uh, offered uh, some sort of uh, magnificent help to Barbican, which are you know, very open. And um, the result was an exhibition of 20 years of digital imaginarium or stuff. And uh, as a matter of fact, the whole genesis of digital art was stuffed in a room uh, that was called Media Archaeology. And the rest of the space was dedicated to some Google software project where they invited artists to do stuff on top of their platform. I don't know, man. Uh, but uh, 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 the ugliest bit, I believe, uh, regardless of the fee, was that they chose Jody's work and my work uh, for the merchandise. So now, finally, we are, we are made men. I feel, I feel like a made man. Uh, you can buy a bank with my ASCII uh, image from Psycho. They wouldn't use a blowjob, I don't know. Uh, and you can buy a keychain ring uh, with the Jody stuff. And uh, Marcel was kind enough to send me a postcard uh, with, a, uh, with Jody uh, work also. Awesome. From from Belgium you sent it, right? Yeah, yeah, it was an uh, art market. Yeah, we had a thing in Imala uh, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, this is one context where we uh, where, where I, I would I would easily participate with this piece. Another one would be a uh, more like dark clouds kind of a meeting. Uh, Oh yeah, this is a, a piece of merchandise I suggested to Barbican, but we didn't make it. Uh, you know these banners, like online banners, 486, 60 pixel large? I was suggesting to print uh, stickers in that type of a ratio that you put on top of your uh, spy camera that you have on your laptop. Uh, I think that would uh, make it a, a good use of a banner, finally. And also I like the, the, the implied uh, the implied 
claimed that uh, whereas in nuclear physics we had uh, some aroma of remorse, even if it was a bit too late, by Oppenheimer, uh, in computer arena we don't operate with remorse uh, for creation of uh, weapons of mass seduction or destruction of weapons. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, I like the last, the, the, the typed text. Somehow, I just wrote it for no apparent reasons recently, but uh, I find it functioning. Uh, I believe that Adorno gave us a beautiful thought formula that you can fill with your contents, and uh, um, mine is like that. It's just a demo of a language game. So, that's another conference. Uh, this is from a conference uh, uh, I've been to in Zagreb for the last June or something like that. Um, uh, at, the, at the net time days, uh, I, I used this sentence that art was a substitute for internet. Like we were, uh, my infatuation with the new medium and the space, uh, means of expression such that I, I, I claimed that this is the final destination of art. But completely crap, you know, a, a nice sounding sentence. I decided then to replace that old sentence with this one. As a matter of fact, we were all taken for a ride and we know it, right? And then I found final proof, you know, Google used it as, uh, as one of those doodles, you know, instead of their logo. Yeah, as, as you can see, think, uh, you know, we should put our slides together. <laughs> uh, this is, this is my, my first and still the biggest impression from Solitude. Uh, uh, this uh, is a sticker I found in my kitchen. Uh, Not peace, I don't forget. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I couldn't identify it as an art piece, it was just a scare piece. <laughs> it was made by an institute based in Stuttgart called Institute for General Theory. Ah. Who is pulling whose leg now? <laughs> I have like five Me seconds never. to choose if I want to believe you or not. Right. Okay. But uh, it's, it's only a trigger. I, I, I like it how we are you know, spending 10-15% of our annual stipend on, on acquiring hardware that is supposed to make us hip and prestigious and instead it's actually just you know, ratting on us big time and uh, uh, sending drones based on metadata and stuff like that. But still, uh, uh, for some imaginary conference uh, about, about uh, post modern internet, you know, this would be a good piece maybe. <laughs> and this is the last, uh, the third instance of the appearance of my friend Dan, the book, book uh, guy, the bookshop guy from Ljubljana. Uh, I, I posted uh, this annou announcement that I will be in, uh, uh, in Stuttgart. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then I'll be talking about this piece and I asked everybody, you know, hello internet, uh, what should I talk about? And he answered and he sent me like these long, uh, amazingly long texts, uh, well, I should give them to you guys maybe. Um, anyway, uh, he suggested that I, I use uh, Slava Zizek and his, uh, uh, his little story about uh, intellectual property industry being like this coyote these cartoons that runs and runs and runs and doesn't realize he's above the ambis and there's no solid ground under him but refuses to realize. This is a realization moment. Anyway, I, 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 have, I have put this slide here out of, out of sheer love for, for this friend of ours and really that situation was like some weird combination of like public suicide, art performance, <laughs> business practice going wrong, badly wrong, <coughs> so on. So this slide is for them, okay? And now for the bonus track, right? This is now, now I've, I've done my talk about, about Documenta done. Documenta done, done. Uh, now these are the slides, uh, these are the photos of the show I wanted to show to you. You said you want to see it, but anyway, so watch. Uh, this is, yeah, this was a show in Ghana, uh, because of the landscape portrait of the slides, uh, you, you had to put two posters, that's how you understand. The exhibition was called Net Art Painters and Poets because of Dada Painters and Poets, which was this famous project from the 50s, you know nothing about, but fuck it. Um, I decided to make it uh, a bit, okay, so. Here, here the books are important uh, in, this, in this conference. And, and we're working on a book about, about the show. And just before leaving, I had one of these final editorial meetings, so the book will exist. I wrote all the texts. 
I know they exist, so it actually is going to materialize. But right now, there's a time frame, this little window, where the book doesn't exist yet. So I'm now uh, like a little bit of a, a, a stand-up comedian version of a book. <laughs> of, of a book. I hate, I told you this just a minute ago, I hate this conference, I should tell you that. Because every five seconds somebody uses my name, and I mean, every, somebody says a book, and I always think, <laughs> what, what, and whenever I'm like, I must admit, sometimes my attention slips, you know, I don't like, uh, when I'm typing, or I'm answering an SMS, and then somebody says a book, uh, <laughs> and it was bad student. Okay, okay. So, uh, this, this book uh, is, is intended to be like a book of books. Uh, uh, in, in, in ancient, uh, long forgotten prehistory of net art, we did this piece of a refresh project uh, in '96 with uh, another, uh, with Alexei Shulgin, this great guy, and uh, Andreas Brockman, who is German, and we did a piece uh, that was like an online performance piece. It was called Refresh. So we put our little pages in a little chain, and your browser worked as a TV set because it would refresh automatically. Blah, blah, blah very meaningful and, and so for this catalog of hours I decided to um, invite uh, my friends who wrote books about our work to uh, do a reenactment of a refresh in shape of PhD to PhD uh, in shape of a ring where every person would write the review uh, of the book of the next person in the ring uh, and, and the fee, the honorarium was the floppy disk from 96 uh, because that original refresh project uh, we put on a floppy back then and because it was put on a cover of a book, a uh, net time book, a uh, uh, net time meeting, whatever. And it worked in five out of eight cases. I'm not going to tell you which, uh, let it be suspense, uh, but the texts are fine. Uh, uh, two of them are actually readable. Uh, uh, anyway, so that's the book. Uh, that's the uh, book of books part of the catalog, and now I'm going to just run through several exhibition shots. Uh, the exhibition was imagined, uh, you know, uh, at first the invitation to curate a show and to install a show about net art was like easy, and I said, sure, I'll do it, I'm the master, come on, what can go wrong? But then suddenly I realized, oh, but we never really answered those questions, did we? You know, we were just making fun of everybody trying, but we never did it properly ourselves and shit like that. So to cut it short, I decided to do an exhibition of exhibitions. And uh, this is how it goes. Uh, I, I, I reenacted the, the show of Per Plateau, the Oslo exhibition, where you also could see gold frames with screenshots of canon, of canonical net art pieces. I'm not going into details which is which, come on. Um, so we had a room like this, a Baroque room. That's my commentary. And then there was this German room and uh, uh, the office I had to. Only here we really uh, pinpointed exactly precisely the same color of blue as the IBM logo because the one in Castle was off a little bit. <laughs> uh, biggest job here was to get the working Windows 95 PCs. Uh, mm -hmm. They were given to us from the Museum of History. Amazing. Uh, there's this Dutch guy, Constant Dulart, he uh, does the documentation of uh, net art pieces as a video, two-channel video. So you have a user surfing through a website, and on the other screen you have the website itself. Like in the online, uh, like in the web usability laboratories, if you know what I just said. And so finally I, I played the game a little bit, uh, so he's planting, you know that uh, guy I mentioned before. Uh, he was in Ljubljana, so I said we should be the users of NetArt. So we, we sat down together and uh, we're users of Jody. Uh, Connie, how do, you, how, do you, how do you find this? It's, it's like incest to the tenth potential. Huh? <laughs> it's the Jody room with the, with the Jody print on the floor or some, some shit there. Right. This is the Aram Barton other piece, this is a little online playset. So you, you cut uh, like you know, a toy uh, uh, like children, you know, for girls, it's like paper paper toy, you put it on your laptop. We didn't have one for the show, I'm sorry. And behind, in those browsers, you have net art. Only this one is a remake of, of the room in the floor below. It's a remake of our own show. 
inside. Sure, it makes sense. I don't know. Your dog. Hmm? Your dog. <laughs> Just search for your dog meme. Will do. Your dog. Oh, this is yet again a vertical. This is a, I put this here because of uh, Felix, we just mentioned this piece yesterday. This is the Bitnik Grupa excellent piece. Here are these two monitors. But behind is my favorite piece of the whole show, which is Ellen Roth, uh, Badass Green, Altenulator. Uh, this is enough. Because <laughs> I just saw this paper, and it says five minutes, and it was here all the time. And <laughs> Interactivity, I would say, was from the beginning much more, and, and now I'm polemic uh, about the infantilization of the user. So uh, I don't know why you mix. Well, I, I don't mix much. It's uh, true that 1997 was our 1977, you know, when the Clash signed their first contract. It was like the death of the heroic period, or the end of the virginity, or whatever you want to say, the declaration via Peter Bible. Uh, it was not so instrumental, it was more and more documented than, than that kind, really. Um, and it is uh, maybe valuable to compare the early years of net art uh, with, what's, with the debates we are seeing nowadays about so-called post-internet art. Um, I'm trying to follow as, as much as my stomach allows me, really, because it's kind of dizzy and so on. But the interesting thing is, is that these things that people call post-internet art is exactly the same. There's like zero difference, <laughs> except for one. Uh, these guys are not even talking about sellout. They're not even discussing the institutions. They're not even approaching that dilemma in any way, other than the practicality of actually putting a piece in the room, uh, in a gallery, but just for the physical part of it and how it looks in the photo. Um, and, and, and some of the works are fucking amazing. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about the pieces that I see. It's just that they don't work, they don't care. Uh, uh, they would not see a problem with the first video I have shown. You know, that's, that's my feeling. So you, you used the word yesterday about something totally different. It's a repolitization of XYZ. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for that, to, to, to sense that in the online related art. As for, as for interactivity, yes, it's putting off a user in a predetermined uh, role vis-a-vis uh, -vis the proposed online or offline digital service. Fuck it. It's about being a sheep. You know, the, the, the scissors for cutting wool are interactive, right? You, you need a sheep to interact with those scissors. <laughs> All right, 
that was, that was a good attempt. It sounded like a question, and actually there was an answer. We're good. We're doing fast. Like, mm, fantastic. So you didn't tell much, but okay, that was the clash of epic proportions or miscommunication of epic proportions or mis misunderstanding of epic proportions between uh, what you said was the administration of fundamenta and uh, capacities that internet, that inherit to internet. Uh, but uh, was there any reaction on yeah, the side uh, of documenta and how did they come I to terms with I got an award the next day for the most notable art achievement of the year uh, by MIT, which is this school not far away. And uh, that was a killer uh, because uh, the documenta guys, I, I met a few times with uh, Simone Aminier, who was a curator of the digital the online part of this. We met in ICA, which is an uh, ex institution for new media in London. Uh, in a, uh, Benjamin Well uh, made a whole conference about archiving the web. And we debated this on stage, and it was... Um, I, I shouldn't have gone there. I mean, I like London, and I, I used the, you know, the ticket and the fee to go out to Compendium Bookstore and buy stuff. But it was so unfair, you know, because all of the audience, and there was a full house, was like applauding to this peace of mind. You know? I, I felt good, of course. You know? Your ego grows even more <laughs> impossible. Uh, and then this poor guy was there representing the other side. And I felt so sorry, man. Uh, and he tried his best and it didn't quite work. And that was the totality of the interaction that there was. But Tilda Malgato uh, tried to tease them into reacting, to send me a cease and desist letter, to send me some dimash. Uh, now that ever happened. Because uh, honestly, I actually believe that uh, the curators didn't want to take the blame for the, the decision that wasn't theirs. They understood the situation quite well, and they didn't want to uh, add more kerosene to the fire. So, and I'm, I'm not the type of artist that go, goes to provoke in order to end up in court, in order to have more marketing for their persona. Uh, we were really like uh, rock stars at, the st at that time, and I didn't need extra exposure because there would be no possible way to be more exposed. Uh, so neither I had this desire. So if if nobody is for it, it's not going to happen. Um, I have not quite understood yet, uh, but maybe I overheard it. Um, why art, actually? I um, maybe also looking into the history that I'm so astonished that actually the art and also the type of publicity, public, public uh, that art institutions offer uh, might be so uh, interesting and seducing uh, that one wants to actually be involved there, especially when you compare it to, what, to, the, to the catastrophes that you showed in the beginning, this image that made you cry. So considering that, why go into art at all? Yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough to go out of your own character, OOC, you know, out of character. It's like in gaming. Uh, we are all educated, groomed for some roles, even if we are not aware of that. And I grew up in socialist Yugoslavia in the you know, 80s and shit. And uh, for me, art was cool. And uh, art was, as a matter of fact, at the time I was growing up and arriving at these big eternal conclusions, uh, art was socially meaningful practice. But honestly, uh, but if you were an artist back then, now it sounds unimaginable, but if you were an artist back then, you were cool, uh, you were hanging out with the cool guys, now it's like a loser uh, We know it's easy to ask about art like this today. Huh? But uh, I inherited this, and uh, I wanted to perpetuate that. I was personally infected with the avant-garde viruses, I was the one collecting all the books, reading this shit. I still collect first editions, and we still have to scan some of that shit. But, uh, so yes, uh, for me, yeah, uh, an attempt to answer your question is that for me, art somehow still has some position in the social tissue, you know, the ecosystem of society, where you can ask good questions, like the good man said, and you don't have to even provide answers. That's cozy, but of course, if you are an uh, honest person, you might indicate some direction for answering, for, for asking those questions. And for, for me, that's good enough, you know. And plus, um, I like the way artists dress. 
I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm noticing you're wearing a t-shirt over a long sleeve thing, so you know, I'm, I'm expecting that you understand my position. <laughs> it's a fashion critique of art. Well, it's about the glasses. Uh, plus the glasses. <laughs> we, go, we both go to the same hairdressers. <laughs> I was wondering why you were kind of asking for a repolitization of post-internet art. It seems totally weird for me because for me that's a parallel universe and the other parallel to it is what we see here. You know, there is a politicized internet art. So Yes, yes. But uh, like, the, like the reason we, we needed the label net art or these younger people need the label post-internet art it's what Sebastian very bitterly observed yesterday. Like uh, we were doing this amazing, these amazing projects that were powerful, and then there were these other guys doing much less powerful project, equally honest, but you know not so strong. And then they were marketing that so strongly. Uh, that these other projects got a lot of prominence. I think that the need for prominence is human. That's one. I have to say about these labels, and you see, uh, I, I know that there is political online art or art uh, that discusses the political dimension of information society. But I would like the exposed generation, the exposed pantheon of post-internet art, to also address these issues, because then these thoughts would gain more traction. It's like Serbian tennis, if I may. Uh, Serbia is, uh, let's not go into full description, but uh, there is a way to compare it to Germany in 1946, all right? It's like somewhere there. And then all of a sudden you have these like super successful individuals that get a lot of exposure. And then when they win Wimbledons and such, uh, it's a, a massive lost opportunity uh, to deal with the politics of the space, and instead of saying, saying anything, they go on and perpetuate the local cannibalist traditions and celebrate with trumpets and, and, and say vulgar well, racist things all the time. Uh, I think this is the lost opportunity for some well promoted, well exposed internet art group of people to say good, big, important things. And instead, they are saying other stuff, and that's that's the reason why I would like to see more juice in that shit. That, that, that's that's my answer. For, I hope. What do you want? Want to fight? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe Cornelia, you want to ask the last question, then? No, I think that's a longer discussion. Okay. Um, Come on, let's go have coffee and cookies. And no, no, no. You, you are patient. <laughs> Yeah. So, nobody? See? Okay, you, you get your coffee. So. <laughs>